Hey, this is Kyle from McPhee Motor Cars Hot Rod Shop in Diamonddale, Michigan. Today we're off topic of hot rods a little bit. All of our hot rods have been winterized for the winter. It's late October 2020, and um, we're outside. Obviously, you can hear sirens and traffic, and hopefully it's not too bad. The wind's blowing uh, out here in mid-Michigan. But we got a Rockwood Ultralight 2906 RS uh, RV travel trailer here that we need to winterize. And I was out here playing around with it, starting to get it winterized. I was taking videos of things that I was doing so I could check them in the spring to make sure that I undo them so I don't forget anything. And I figured why not make a video and uh, put it on YouTube so in case anyone else has a trailer like this. Um, or maybe you can tell me something I'm doing wrong or uh, you have a better, a better way of doing something. But I'm going to show you how I winterized this uh, 2906 RS. Okay, the first thing you want to do, uh, at least the first thing I did, uh, I started finding in front of the trailer here. We have the hot water heater location, and uh, I popped the release valve right here to take the pressure off the system. Um, we pulled out the anodizing rod. It's a, a mineral collector here out of your water tank, and you can see it's still pretty good shape. The trailer's fairly new. You'll know when these are wore out when it's down to the, the minimum rod there and all the material is consumed. But it's an inch and one sixteenth uh, socket, and it goes right into this uh, canal here, into this hole. And uh, you want to put some good Teflon tape on it when you put it back in. That'll empty the hot water tank. Uh, we're just going to lay this in here and uh, leave it for the winter. We'll dry up some of this extra uh, water so it doesn't freeze here uh, as we go. So that'll drain. Take the pressure off. That'll drain. Um, then you want to make sure you uh, know where your access point is for your hot water tank or is right next to it you have to remove these um, partitions with a couple screws that go in here and then uh, this will give you access to your water pump and your hot water heater and there's some valves in there that we have to switch on and off for bypassing also the low point drains these are the two small caps um, they have washers in them so make sure you don't use lose the Teflon washers that are inside they're uh, two small uh, drain tubes that hang down under the trailer. Uh, different trailers have them in different locations so uh, make sure that you take those and drain your low point tubes. Next, the next thing you want to do is uh, pull your fresh water tank, empty it all out. Uh, ours has a white rod, push it in and out and just let that drain. Mine's been draining for a couple days now. Um, just let that drain empty and I usually close those up at the end so they don't freeze over. Okay uh, on this particular trailer you have to get rid of the water in your water filter uh, car uh, cartridge so we have done that I've pulled the water filter already out of it emptied all the water out of that and you're gonna want to replace your cartridge next year water pumps here hot water tank is in there there's a couple valves in here that you need to be aware of so obviously red is hot Blue is cold, so those white valves on the back of the tank need to be turned off. When we put antifreeze through, you do not want it going in your hot water heater, and that's how you do it. You stop it right there, and then turn this valve on right here, and this will draw the antifreeze from this spout here. Okay, antifreeze right in here, and it'll come directly in through the pump, and it'll pressurize the system, and then you go turn all the all your uh, faucets on and it'll get your antifreeze going that way all right so that's what we're going to do next okay folks if you have an outdoor shower don't forget to empty the shower head on this okay so you're going to want to open all your valves and drain all the water out of these things and uh, then we'll run some antifreeze through the same stuff later so make sure that you take care of your outdoor shower Okay, I want to mention too, if you have an outdoor kitchen, we do. Um, looks like I left the light on. We do have an outdoor kitchen, however, there's no sink. There's no plumbing. There's a refrigerator in there that's turned off, but there is no plumbing in this particular trailer. If you have a sink with a faucet, you're going to have to purge those lines as well. So don't forget about your outdoor uh, kitchens. Okay, once we're inside the trailer, make sure that you're opening all your valves um, to your faucet and emptying all the water that's out of the lines there. Uh, you might want to click on the pump for a minute to push the water through. 
in the bathroom. Make sure you get all the water out of the bat, uh, the toilet, the sink, and your shower head. Those have all been done already. Um, I clicked the pump on here uh, and uh, drained those earlier. Close them back up. We'll have to repressurize the system to get our antifreeze pushed through. All right, what we're gonna do next, I've got an old piece of hose here. It's sitting around and I've got it strapped into this antifreeze inlet. And we're gonna put, when we turn the pump on, it's gonna draw antifreeze through the hose from these bottoms. We could use, I don't know, two, three, four of these things. And, uh, some antifreeze introduced into the system. All right, so we're gonna go uh, flip the switch and then we're gonna start to go into all the valves until they run pink. Run the water pump here and then we'll go run all the faucets. I got a new, I have a new uh, jug of antifreeze hooked up to the hose. So let's see if we can get some pink flowing here. And that looks pretty good. I'll let a little bit more come get the air out. Okay, that's pretty pink. Let's go to the other side. We got good color coming out of the kitchen here. Make sure we got both. Alright, those are both good. Let's go into the bathroom. Excuse the uh, pardon the uh, camera work here, but I'm doing it by myself. Wait for pink to come into the bathroom toilet. And that looks pretty good. Okay. All right, we got a new jug of antifreeze installed. All right, we got good color coming here. We got good color coming this side. Shower. Okay, looks like we got good color there. It's really love the reverse dials on the shower like I do. I scan those. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. Okay, we got good color in the bathroom. We're gonna do the outside shower. One additional tip that I was told is with the remaining antifreeze that I have is to pour it in the traps of the drains. And um, those are the low points in the drains and you want this antifreeze sitting in those low points. So pour a little bit in the traps, in the kitchen, and we'll throw some in the trap. Bathroom sink. Shower. And we'll get another jug and we'll put some in the toilet. It looks like the toilet's good as long as you got some sitting in here so that doesn't freeze. Uh, I've had friends who reported that that valve cracked over the winter. And I'm assuming it's because they didn't leave antifreeze there over the seal in the winter. So make sure you do that. One last tip. I was also informed, since this is our first year, I didn't uh, experience it, someone told me. We're gonna go through and wipe out the excess pink on the plastic because it, if it's there long term, uh, it will stain. It's got alcohol in it. So we're gonna clean these out, dry them out, so there's no pink left over. We don't want uh, pink stains in the shower and in the sinks. All right, folks, I'm back with you again. Uh, now, I just wanted to show you a couple things that did not go as planned when we were winterizing the, uh, the uh, travel trailer here. First thing, when I hooked up my old hunk of garden hose over here to the antifreeze inlet, thank God there's a filter in there. Because when I hooked it up and pressurized the system, nothing was coming through the system. The pump was uh, trying to run, the water canister was not filling, and when it was filling, it was dark in color like dirty so I suspected that there was something in the hose that I didn't like lo and behold when I cleaned out the hose 
that was in it. I don't know, it's just from a mouse or something, but that was in my hose. So the hose laid around outside under the deck and I probably should have checked it beforehand, but I didn't. Thank God there was a filter, a screen, stopping it from going into my pump or we would have had serious problems. The other thing that didn't go as planned, once I got the antifreeze flowing, I think I went through three jugs. This is what's left of the fourth. Um, all the faucets purged pink, no problems whatsoever. Uh, I came back to look inside here to switch out and I saw pink antifreeze spraying out up here. I did not turn the cartridge uh, holder back on tight enough so the o-ring seal didn't seal at the top and I sprayed antifreeze all over inside on the floor. So uh, a couple rolls of paper towel uh, took care of that and uh, you know that's live and learn. Uh, one only a hardly a quarter turn by hand stopped that leaking so make sure you tighten up your don't over tighten it with the wrench just hand tighten it and that should take care of any leaks there. Other than that everything went fine um, as far as purging out the system. So, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Uh, it was a learning experience for sure. Hey, I just wanted to mention one more um, thing that I'm sure that most people do, but I just didn't want to forget to mention it, is the batteries. Most trailers have two. For some reason, mine came with one. Uh, I was told there was two, but there's one and it runs everything fine. Uh, disconnect that battery and get it in, into a warmer area of your garage or whatever and put it on a float charger uh, Over the uh, cold months. You don't want to leave that battery in there unless you're plugged in and you got some kind of heat going into that thing Freezing temperatures bad for batteries that are sitting there So pull that battery turn that power disconnect underneath off and get it in and put it on a trickle charger Don't forget your battery. So I wanted to address something that I you guys didn't see me do uh, during the winterization. That's using compressed air from my air compressor to uh, blow the water out. The reason I didn't do that, A, I was told that if I blew too much air through there, I could damage the lines and, and void warranty and all that kind of stuff. This thing's still only a couple months old, so I didn't want to do anything stupid. I don't trust my air compressor to keep it below 50 or 30, whatever the recommendation was. So I didn't use compressed air. I've seen guys do that. and. Uh, Another thing is, I couldn't find the little fitting to screw into uh, the inlet, and uh, so I didn't use the air compressor, and I was told that you know, it wasn't necessary if I get enough antifreeze in the system. So if we have any questions or comments as to why you didn't do that, that's why. Finishing up our winterization on our Rockwood Ultralight 2906RS. Uh, this is our new tow vehicle that we used. Uh, we just got this about a month ago. Um, 180 degree difference in towing. Um, it's it's the diesel in this thing's got so much power that I don't even feel the trailer behind us, and it's probably the best thing I ever did was buy this vehicle. So um, I, I I would endorse it if anyone's even thinking about going Duramax to gas. I don't know what the 66 gas is like. I didn't drive one, but I've never owned a diesel in my life. I've always been a half ton, 5.3 liter V8. I pulled it. But it struggled at times if terrain got steep. This thing is just an absolute beast. So um, we love it. So a couple things, finishing up the winterization. Uh, we got things all buttoned up. Uh, we put the slides in for the winter. Okay, I recommend a couple things. Uh, we ran into a situation where we were camping and uh, it rained really hard. Um, we didn't get wet inside, but we got condensation inside some of the cabins inside one of the slide outs. Uh, this side slide out right here. Some of the overhead cabinets the next morning had heavy condensation inside of them. So we started looking around the outside. The seal, the vertical seal on the outside didn't flip out all the way and there was a big gap in there. It stuck to the caulking that the factory had laid in there. And so um, I bought some of this slide out rubber seal conditioner at the RV store. Um, thinking it was a gimmick, but I hose down all of the slide out seals with this stuff Probably at least three or four times now never had that problem again. They pop right out Seems to recondition the rubber a little bit soften things up. So um, I hosed it down real good with this stuff uh, Before we closed them up. I also hit the uh, slide out rails uh, underneath with uh, some of this dry lube 
and uh, just doesn't leave it greasy, collect dirt, that kind of thing. It's just a dry lube with Teflon by PB Blaster um, and ran that onto the slide out uh, thing a few times. Seemed to lube it up. And you wonder about uh, uh, rodents up here in northern Michigan. You know, in the wintertime we get rodents and uh, rabbits and whatever else seeking warmth. And so we, you know, our hot rods are a perfect example. You can't go wrong with these things right here. Dryer sheets, old fashioned bounce dryer sheets. Throw them everywhere inside your hot rods. We get no mice in the cars whatsoever. I've never had a mouse chew a wire on any of my cars. I put these all under the engine compartment in the trunk, up under the tires and the wheels. It's cheap. I go buy three, four boxes of these things and throw them all over the place. Um, and then just throw them away in the springtime. So these work really well. I don't know if it's the odor in them that the, the rodents don't like, but I don't have the problem. So what we're going to do is, in all the holding compartments and uh, all the openings, wherever a rodent can get in, we're going to throw some bounce dryer sheets in there. My wife takes care of all the inside stuff. You know, we got tubs and seal bags and everything else. Also, don't forget to prop your refrigerator door and your freezer door open. Rockwood gives you two little uh, gimmicks that go on the end of the freezer in the uh, refrigerator door. Uh, I should have showed you that. They're little flat pieces that prevent it from locking. Let's the an air gap in there, turn the refrigerator off and, and let it defrost, defrost naturally. You don't get that mold mildew and all that kind of stuff. We're still plugged in uh, late October. I got the thermostat running off the gas, about 50 degrees in there. When it starts to get colder, I'll probably unplug it and, uh, and just let it go for the winter once the temperatures start dropping a little more. I don't want to be pumping RV uh, or LP gas in at all, all winter long. But um, that's pretty much all I can think of. I know there's people out there because I watch your YouTube videos that know a hell of a lot more about this stuff than I do. I learn a lot of stuff every day on there. If you got uh, tips for me, leave them down in the comments. Just don't bust my chops, okay, about the video production here. Um, uh, I didn't major in video production. Right? I did this by myself. I didn't have a cameraman. Uh, I didn't have a thousand dollar camera or anything like that. So uh, don't bust my chops on the production value, okay? If you want to bust my chops on being a fat old man that shouldn't be on YouTube, I guess then I'll deserve that. So anyway, hope you guys, all your fellow RVers, have a good winter. If you're down south, you're bums. Someday we're going to get down there um, soon. Uh, I retired, so I think in a couple years we're going to come south or west because uh, we're getting real tired of shoveling snow here in Michigan. So if you're out those ways during the winter time, have a great off season, and we'll see you again in the spring at McPhee Motor Cars Hot Rod Shop. Take care, everyone. That's what you do when you're retired. Smoke cigars, CAO Columbia. Get your best friend right here, this Irish Green Golden Retriever. His name is Thunder Chief. You hop in your Polaris Ranger XP900. And you drive through the subdivision.